Hello, hello, how are you doing? Hope you're doing well. It's Phil Thatch and today I have a new lens to play around with and this is a lens that I specifically bought to use with my Nikon ZFC. Uh, it's a manual focus lens and you know this is kind of a retro camera so these two should go together pretty well. This is a lens made by a company called TT Artisans. This is the TT Artisans 35 millimeter f 1.4 and this lens is designed for APS-C mirrorless cameras uh, you can get it for for Nikon Z you can get it for Canon M I think they make a version for Sony I know they make it for Fuji X and they even make it for um, for Leica uh, my buddy David Saylors has one for his Leica I think it's a CL I'm not very well versed in Leica camera names but Anyway, he uh, and it comes in two versions. It comes in black and silver, and uh, David got a black one which matches his Leica pretty well. But I thought for the ZFC, the uh, the silver would be a better match, and I finally found it available in silver and picked it up. So let's take a look. It has some tape sealing the box, and I'm going to cut that right now and open this thing up. For the very first time. It's kind of a nice box. Uh, made in China. The box has a nice texture to it. And uh, once I open it up, it's got a little book and a gel pack. And the lens is was, well, I'll put it back down there. The lens is in this nice foam surround, so it's definitely not going to get damaged during shipping unless it's crushed. All right, so we'll pull it out of there. <clears throat> Let's get it out of there. It's in a bag. And inside the bag is the lens. You know, and, and it's kind of an unusual looking lens, especially for Nikon Z mount because the, the Z mount is huge, so the lens has to taper and get really big on one side. Oh, it comes with a comes with a um, a rear cap, which is pretty cool, and the front cap. That's, oh wow, it's a it's a screw on metal front lens cap. Uh, it says TT Artisans APS-C 35 millimeter f 1.4. Um, let's see if I can get the camera to focus on this. It has the 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 lens elements on it right there. I don't know if you can see that, but it has the a diagram of how the lens elements are. It also has that same, you can see it here on the box as well, what it looks like. And uh, I need to put my, let me put my glasses on so I can see what else it says. It has a nice TT Artisan logo here on the side and Ah, it has a, a lot of these um, inexpensive manual lenses these days. The aperture is clickless, and some people say that that's a good thing for, uh, for video. I never change my aperture in video, so I'm happy that this one is clicked. It's got a stop at 1.4, and it's got another stop halfway in between 1.4 and 2. And then it's got a stop in between 2 and 2.8. And then it's got a, a stop in between 2.8 and 4. And then it goes to 5.6 and 8 and 16. It skips right past f11. There's not a stop for f11. But it, it certainly has a nice feel to it. It, it, it seems to be uh, all metal construction. Oh, it's got nice... Uh, it's got nice writing there inside the, the front of the lens as well. So uh, let me pop it on my let me pop it on my ZFC and see what it looks like on there. If I can figure out how to pop it on my ZFC. There we go, it's kind of unusual looking and cool looking at the same time. The TT Artisans 
35 millimeter f 1.4 manual lens in silver mounted on my Nikon ZFC. I popped it back off because I wanted to see if there were any electric connections. There's no electronic connections at all. So this lens will not send EXIF data. Oh, and I just noticed on the inside, let's see if that'll focus, there's a red dot on the inside of the flange. And that's what you line up when it comes time to mount the lens. Did it much faster on my second time now that I knew where that red dot was. I'm used to looking for a red dot on the outside of the ring, but this one is on the bottom where you can only see it if you're looking there instead of there. But like I say, once you, once you learn where it is, it's a piece of cake to get mounted up. Well, I was just about to make a few test shots with the lens and my battery was dead, so I put a fresh battery in it and I've made a few shots. What, what I've done on, on my ZFC is this front uh, function button here, right by the lens. I have that programmed to um, magnify 10 times because I don't trust um, focus peaking. If you want a picture that's soft, use focus peaking is kind of my philosophy. So what I do is uh, I put, I set the camera for single point focus and then you can move that focus point around and once you get that focus point to where you want your main subject to be, then you can click that button and zoom and manually focus and get the main focus area nice and perfectly sharp and fire. So that's that's my uh, manual focus strategy. It's it's pretty slow and meticulous, but for me that's the way to get the very best results. So now I'm going to take this camera downtown Chattanooga and uh, my daughter and I are going to go down there and have some lunch and goof around with this lens for a while. Come with us. Casey and I came downtown with the TT Artisans 35F 1.4 on the ZFC and we, we ate at a restaurant and walked around with uh, Casey and her dog Watson for a while. And then we came over to the other side of the river and hung around uh, near the walking bridge and um, places like that. It made a number of photos and I'll show those to you now. Casey and I ate at a restaurant called Food Works, which is inside this old historic building in Chattanooga called the Signal Mill. And it's just beautiful, the brick work there. And I really enjoyed shooting at F 1.4 with this inexpensive lens and making photographs of my daughter there. I thought these came out really, really nice. I don't see, I mean, I'm sure if you really, really pixel peep, there's probably some chromatic aberration somewhere, but I haven't seen any myself personally. And these shots are all wide open at F 1.4 there at the signal mill as we walked around and I always enjoy taking pictures of my daughter and she's very patient with me and allows me to do so and man look at the beautiful focus on her and the beautiful background. Now I want you to know that uh, sometimes TT Artisan will let YouTubers have a copy of their lens for free so they'll review it well, that is not the case with me. I bought this lens with my own money. Uh, this is what it looks like on the B&H website. I believe I bought mine from Amazon because they had silver in stock. But look how inexpensive this lens is. And there's no bias here. I bought this lens with my own money. After lunch, my daughter and I went over to the Walnut Street Pedestrian Bridge and looking over at the John Ross Market Street Bridge, I made this 17-shot handheld panorama. I stopped the lens down to F8, and I'm really pleased with the results. A lot of times when I show my panorama shots in my videos, I just scroll them back and forth. But I really wanted to take a moment and show you the amount of detail that this $73 lens on about a $1,000 camera body got. I made my focus point here on the center of the bridge when I manually focused, and then I started over here and made my 17 shots for this panorama. But just look, if you're watching this on a 4K monitor, this is a 100% crop 
for you. Just look at all the detail of the bridge. And I thought it was interesting. You know, the first three shots uh, were made where Casey and I had our lunch and it was at the Signal Mill. It was a restaurant that's in this old Signal Mill building, this old brick building. That's where the first three pictures all the way across the river, perfectly clear. Just lots and lots of detail in this image. And I wanted to show it to you like this so I could kind of scroll around and show you the detail because sometimes just kind of scrolling back and forth doesn't really show everything. And I was just amazed how well this $73 lens, when you stop it down to F8, it is just amazing how well this panorama came out now this shot i stopped down to f 2.8 i was wanting to do all my portraits at 1.4 but the zfc only has a 1 4 thousandth that's its shortest shutter speed and with all that light and 1.4 it was overexposing so that one was at 2.8 now this shot look at the bokeh here i'm focused on the nearest bicycle dock and just letting them drift further and further out of focus what a beautiful, beautiful bokeh this lens produces. Here's another portrait of Casey. This is uh, on the south shore of the river. The other photos were on the north shore of the river, and then some of them were on the bridge in between. But I followed Casey around and made a few more portraits of her. This is another one at F1.4. Now this shot, uh, she has her dog Watson, and I was having trouble getting both Casey and the dog in focus at F1.4 because the dog wouldn't sit still very much. So this shot, I stopped down to F5.6, and the lens does well there. Now here is Casey's boyfriend, Ian. I made a couple of photographs of them, and here is one of them. I tried to get their faces on an equal plane to where they were both in focus, but Ian is a little bit back, and so he's slightly out of focus, but not bad. Now here is a panning blur. Who would have thought that you could do a panning blur with a manual focus lens? Well, I know my buddy David Saylors does them all the time. But I stopped down to F8 and I focused on the road where I thought the car was going to be. And I used a 1 40th of a second shutter speed. And I made what I thought turned out to be a really great panning blur with this $73 manual focus lens. All right, thanks for joining me for this first look at my TT Artisans 35mm F1.4 for Nikon Z APS-C cameras. Uh, I think it's gonna be a pretty cool lens to use from time to time. It probably, you know, I'm more of an autofocus guy, so it won't be my main lens, but it's a lot of fun to occasionally experiment with a manual focus lens. And I really think I'm happy with how this is going to be for me. So thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like the content. Subscribe, hit the bell, and as always, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.